There's no room for ishtihad fi mawra the nas. Like when you have, you know, a, a text that's that's unequivocal in the Quran, you know, it's it's qat'i al-dilala, qat'i al-wurud. If it's like that, then then we have no opinion. If it's qat'i al-wurud, like the Quran, in other words, qat'i al-wurud, just for people maybe that haven't don't know these this terminology. So. The Quran, everything in it is qat'iyat al-wurud, if it's mutawatir, the ten qira'at. So that means that we know this is from God. But then the dilala or the significations of the verses, dilalat al-alfaad, there's differences of opinion because language is ambiguous very often. If you read the, the, the verse in Surah Al-Qasas about the man who came, uh, you know, Rajulun, uh, you know, yasa' min aqsa al-Madina, right? In that verse, it could be he came and he was from the furthest part of the city. But Yasin clarifies it. It's Mubayyan, because that was Mubham. So in, in Yasin, it says, Waja min aqsa al rajulun yasa. So there's an example where something that's ambiguous in the first one, like if I say, Ja uh, rajulun min Surya. So you could live in Berkeley, but you came here, you're originally from Syria. But if I say, Ja min Surya rajulun, it's very clear that, oh, you came from Syria, you see. So in one, it's Mubham, in another, it's Mubayyan. So sometimes things are ambiguous and other times they're clear. When it is unclear, there's room for ishtihad. And that's why we have a lot of difference of opinion. And, and I believe that's from the maqasid of Sharia because had God wanted, he could have gave us absolutely unambiguous legal statutes for everything. And we would have been robots, you know, just programmed. But language by its nature is ambiguous because it forces us to think, it forces us to do ishtihad. So ishtihad is part of our religion and a very central part of our religion. So most of these verses are unambiguous. No room for reinterpretation of what half means right. or what one six means or one, one, one eighth. You can't, you can't uh, misinterpret these things. And, and for that reason, to, to go against these things means you're going against Nasr al Quran and, and putting yourself in a very dangerous. If you reject it, you're outside of Islam. If you just don't want to follow it, because you're in Masiya, you're still a Muslim, but you're putting yourself in a very dangerous place with God. Now, there are considerations in our time which are important. One, because we are reduced to families that don't have the same type of social structures. Mm. So the wilaya of a man for a woman in, in the zoj, right? So the, per, the reason there's a wali is because Women are very often oppressed. There are men who are oppressed. And it, they estimate, you know, that it, it's anywhere between 20 and 30% in marriages that have domestic problems. The men are actually suffering more than the women. Th these are all debatable because we, you know, it's hard to, but in most cases, it's the woman that suffers because one, she has physical um, uh, disadvantages with the male. Uh, all you have to do is watch a female cop try to bring down a male, uh, you know, criminal, and and you'll see the disadvantage that even women who are trained uh, to do these things have a difficult time. So, it's very easy for men to oppress women uh, physically. I mean, Allah uses a word where that comes from atala, from the muscle. You know, You know, don't like oppress them in that way, especially in you know because we, we've, we've been given this uh, daraja. And it is a daraja, it's not a big difference, you know, but it is there. And it's a daraja of, uh, of imtihan. It's, 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 not, uh, it's not there uh, to oppress, it's there to serve and help. Because of that, I have seen many cases in the United States where I clearly believe a woman was oppressed because of following the letter of the law of the Sharia. And this is where istihsan comes in. And so I'll give you an example. I had a discussion with Sheikh Abdullah because we were talking about community property in the United States. And he said, have a vulm. And I said, well, let me explain to you how they view it. So they view it as a woman's works 20 years in a home, taking care of a husband. So in Sharia, 
a woman's wealth is her wealth. Right. Khadija, whatever she earned was hers, radiallahu anha. And the Prophet ﷺ, whatever he earned was his in their relationship, right? So sharia, that's what it says. If a woman has her own private business, um, she makes her money. And what's interesting is a woman's wealth in a marriage is purely discretionary. Mm. So she has no obligations of maintenance over a man. Unless she chooses, like if the man gets sick and she can work, but that's de gratis. Yeah. I mean, that's from the goodness of, of her heart and she'll get a reward for that. But, um, and so, uh, in California, because a man's out there working, like, you know, I mean, comedians, this is the fodder for comedians. You know, these, these, these men who have like a hundred billion dollars and then the wife leaves them and takes half of it, right. right? And she, all she was, was on his arm at those galas and things like that, right? So that, Sheikh Abdullah just said, you know, it's a vulnerable. And, and so I explained to him how they view it, like that here's somebody who's, enabling this man to be out there yeah. and she creates the home and the domestic environment that renews him it's to go out yeah that. and and then she's iron, probably ironing his shirts and i mean not these billionaires they've got maids to do that but you know in most uh, situations she's doing and so when it breaks down you know she should get half of it so i explained that to him and he said you know istihsanan like from an istihsan, in our, I mean, there's different types of istihsan, but the, the basic idea behind it is where the letter of the law can be, uh, can actually end up being uh, oppressive or unjust. The faqih sees something in the situation that takes him outside of the letter of the law. And, 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 he, and he does something because he deems it, you know, it's something, I mean, some say, لا يعبر عنه, you know, it's something that he understands in his own mind, but really can't express it. But there's an intuitive element to istihsan, where this doesn't seem right. And so, so in that case, they can actually end up, um, you know, determining a situation where uh, the woman, you know, should get more perhaps. Like I've seen women lose the home yeah. because the man bought the home and she's a believer and he just says, well, I bought the home, it's my home. Right. That to me, if especially in a nuclear family situation, that's a boom because I have seen women just literally end up without a home. And so I think these are situations where we really need um, our own civil courts. I yep. mean, one of the beauties of the United States and the Jews really understand this and they utilize it. So the Jewish community has their own civil courts for devout Jews where they actually have the rabbis. System. Exactly, yeah. and and we can do this. Yeah. And these are binding legally. If you, once you sign, you have to okay. accept uh, the arbitration. And so, you will sulhu khair, you know, yeah. arbitration is a good thing to, to reconcile and, and come to that. So, I, you know, I think there is cases where we have to be really careful.